Hello again, everyone. I wanted to make sure that uh, I introduced a different project and a different way of actually using spreadsheets. And in this case, I'd like to give you a glimpse of what Google Fusion Tables is. As I mentioned in, uh, in the Moodle uh, course, that it can be a little bit tricky, uh, but uh, I think maybe if I can show you what it can do, then if you feel that uh, you'd like to investigate some more, you can actually do that. So uh, every year I do a project with my AP Human Geography students that has to do with agriculture. Uh, in particular, I have them pick a specific dish that is created around the world and then have them sort of investigate the, uh, the agricultural origins of the parts of the dish and also relate the dish to things like the concept of organic ar uh, agriculture and also the concept of food miles, which kind of has to do with uh, environmental change. Uh, I will uh, pop this document that describes the project up on the course so you can kind of check it out. But probably more importantly, uh, what my students do is they create uh, a spreadsheet in which they uh, collect all sorts of information, all kinds of data about their dish. So in this case, uh, these students were actually investigating a, uh, an Italian dish, which is a soup dish, uh, pasta e fagioli, which uh, some people uh, in the United States called, called pasta fazu. Uh, in this case, they broke their dish down into basic agricultural ingredients, like what were the basic ingredients of what makes the dish. Notice that, uh, you may be, not be familiar with this, but uh, it's possible within a Google spreadsheet to create tabs. So as you can see, this Google spreadsheet is actually made up of multiple sheets. In order to add new sheets, you can actually just hit the, the uh, plus button here, lower left. Uh, and when you do make new sheets, it's also possible to copy a sheet so or duplicate a sheet. So at any rate, uh, it's possible to have multiple sheets within a single spreadsheet. What they were doing is they were looking for the basic agricultural ingredients. Then they were figuring out uh, if we made shortcuts at the supermarket and uh, what if we made... Uh, what if we bought uh, noodles that were already made? What if we bought pancetta? Uh, what if we bought Parmesan cheese? The basic agri agricultural ingredient would of course be milk. So this is with prepared products. This is if they made the whole dish with organics. Uh, this is exactly how far each one of the prepared products actually had to travel to get to their kitchen. And then this is sort of an analysis of, of the food miles of each of the ingredients. So without getting into detail about what I was teaching, notice that they're uh, able to collect all kinds of data in this spreadsheet. And then I'm going to show you how Google Fusion Tables can be used to sort of automatically create uh, visualizations out of this. Now remember, I, I did state in the, in the Moodle course that some districts may have difficulty offering this to teachers and students. Um, so when you are within your Google Drive account in your district, it is possible that you can't add Google Fusion tables. However, uh, you may notice in the upper right here, this is my personal account. This is not really my district account. I can use Fusion tables in my district. So nonetheless, if you want to play with Fusion tables, it might make sense to do it in your own Google Drive account first. So anyway, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back here to the general Google Drive interface. Notice that this is my personal account, not my district account. I am uh, also going to go to the big red button. To use Fusion Tables, you'll have to add it to your list. So what you would do is you would go down to More, and then you would select collect, Connect More Apps. You'd then do a quick search for Google Fusion Tables, and once you add it, it'll end up on the list here. Okay, so let me walk you through this. I'm going to click Google Fusion Tables. It's going to ask me, where is the spreadsheet I'd like to add into Fusion Tables? It is possible to upload one. Uh, that is an Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to stay within Google Drive, so I'm going to pick Google Spreadsheets. And my uh, Dish Project spreadsheet, it offers to me here as the one I can select to import into Google Fusion Tables. So if I click on it and hit select, this often takes a little while. 
It's actually sort of running through the spreadsheet to see what's in it. What it has done is it's actually taken my spreadsheet and made it into a table. So if you look, if I kind of scroll across here, each of these at the top is actually each one of my sheets. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit next. It's asking me where the column names are. So it's sort of preparing to do a visualization for me. And my column names are right across here in row one. So that's fine. I'm going to hit next. Gives me a chance to sort of title it and describe it. I'm going to hit finish. And it takes me right to the Google Fusion Tables uh, interface. So what it did here is it took my first sheet of my spreadsheet, the dish project, basic in, uh, agricultural ingredients, and it put it into rows. It also put it into, if I click this, cards. Okay, so this is another kind of visualization. Notice that if I hit the plus here, I can add other things, a different card layout, different row layout. I can add a chart or a map. Charts and maps are uh, things to play around with. Maps won't actually work with this particular page because there's no location data on here. However, it's interesting that what Fusion Tables does is, if we go up here and we look at the columns, it figures out what's in the columns and tries to treat it appropriately. So, for example, it realizes that whatever is in column 1 is text, and whatever is in column 2 is some kind of a number. When it sees text and number, it kind of makes it easier to build a chart because it's just thinking about text and numbers. If by chance one of these things was a location, then it would actually instantly figure out, hey, I can make a map out of that. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example of that. Now, when I made that fusion table, if I go back to my Google Drive, in my general Google Drive here, you'll see that it actually made one of these fusion tables, that's the symbol for fusion tables, for each one of the pages. Now, I happen to know that this one has location data in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click it. It's going to take me to Google Fusion Tables, to that specific sheet, and here's what I have. I've got the prepared ingredients. I've got how much they cost. I have an image URL, so this is actually an image of that uh, from the web. And then, of course, I have latitude, longitude right here. So I have location data, okay, and then I have food miles also. This location data does not actually need to be this really fancy latitude, longitude. Google can do something called geocoding. So if you put your home address in there, or if you just even put uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania in there, it would actually figure out exactly where that is, and it would automatically map it. So let's go over here to uh, the change columns and see what it thinks about the columns. So in this case, we need to train it a little bit. So it knows that those are text. It knows that this is a number. It knows that that is a link. It doesn't know that that is a location. So what we'll do is we'll go down here and we'll pick location. Okay, so in fact, it kind of looks and now it actually thinks that that's a location. Now if we go to save, give it a minute. There we go. It has figured out that each one of these things is uh, a latitude and a longitude. Because the format of this particular one is not correct, it doesn't really understand. Okay, so we'll have to, whatever the format is here, we have to make it so that Google understands it. Remember that I, I did say that just an address will be fine. So now if we go to the plus and we pick add map, it's going to take a little bit. What it's doing here in this column is geocoding. It's trying to figure out where those latitude and longitude locations are. And it has officially made a map for us. So now if we look at this map, this is sort of like a little Google map interface. 
each one of those particular columns has now been mapped in its appropriate spot. So I'm going to guess this, this might be the Parmesan coming from here. Okay. So uh, in every case, if we click on one of these, it carries along the information that actually was in that particular column. So it's possible for uh, peep for kids to actually put information into those columns that actually end up on a map. Uh, this map then can be, you can change the styles, and it is also possible, just like anything else in Google Drive, to actually share a fusion table. So that's all I wanted to tell you about fusion tables for now. As I said, it's sort of an optional thing on the course. If you're interested, I encourage you to investigate it further. Uh, next up, I'm going to show you a different way to map that uh, involves Google Maps rather than Fusion Tables.